Good morning, everybody. How are you? Got the comments up. I've got to get this thing up. I'm in my hidey hole up at the cabin. And um, we came up here Saturday. Today's Monday. And I'm up here with my friend Joan Wolfram and Dara Williamson. And Joan, of course, you know, is the person that has the wonderful color tool, the color wheels, and, and all of that. So uh, it started 20 years ago. Yeah, 20 years ago. And we came for three days and now we're on to a 10 day quest. <laughs> Yay! So I'm very grateful that I have a bunch of interviews to bring you. Um, I'm hiding in my bedroom and uh, I, they said they'd be quiet, but I don't care. We're up here to have fun. So I wanted to show you the backyard. Look at everybody coming in from all over the backyard right now. They say tonight another big old fat storm is supposed to be coming in, which is great, and bringing snow to the Sierra, which is great because we need the rain. Hey, everybody. Okay, so here's the back deck, and it's absolutely gorgeous. We have a peaky peak of uh, Pine Mountain Lake from our deck, and we kind of take over the living room. This is not a big place, people. It's, a, in fact, a very small place, and the place just kind of explodes. And maybe towards the end of the week, I might show you the explosion, but right now I'm not ready to do that. <laughs> so, okie dokie. Look at everybody from all over. Yay. Okay. You've been sending me a bunch of um, images, and that makes me really happy. Remember to take advantage of the forum. Remember to go put your show and tell up and all that. I'm kind of amazed at what's coming out with these foundation paper piecing projects we've been doing together. So here we go. Let's take a look at this one. Oh, this isn't foundation paper piecing. Okay. This is Rhonda's and she uh, decided to go more with the Japanese topes with uh, Dee's project. And I think it's spectacular. In fact, she's been talking to Kristen and myself that we need to get some of those Japanese fabrics in the store. Because I know for a lot of people, they're difficult to find. And honestly, they're just gorgeous and they go with everything. So thank you for helping us out and, and keep coming back and corresponding. I really appreciate that. Okay, then this is Gail, uh, Galen's and um, she used her own stuff. And it's so bright and it's so happy and it's so fun. Now, I'm going to tell you something is that as we start looking at more of these, people are getting, doing their own sets. And um, I wonder if this is the next one. No, this is, yeah, this is their own set. This is Shannon's. And um, I liked Shannon. I can see what your focus fabric was. I like Shannon that you then use that focus fabric as filler spaces. I think you guys can see that if we just rest on this for a moment. So it added um, as, uh, I don't, I don't, um, a glorious busyness to the whole thing that keeps your eyes from, keeps your, keeps your eyes traveling, 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 traveling. Hey, Rondi, I'm in your neck of the woods now. We're always in each other's neck of the woods. Okay, then this is Jill's. Okay, this is the one that I went, whoa, okay, look at those New York beauties. I'm sure I've seen something like this before, but could that be an exciting set all in itself? And I wouldn't have thought about this, Jill, until I saw this. So I also, oh, look at the way she has the baskets marching around on the four corners. So basically, no matter what side you stand on, you see something a little bit different um, from Jill's own fabric. And then this is Chantel's. Uh, okay, I think the thing on this that everybody went woo over is your rainbow uh, flying geese on it. Those look really slick. You people should be really happy with how this is going. Um, as for quilting, I I can't remember who quilted mine, um, but I will. Pro I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I'm still behind on my birdhouse, and I'm still behind on. Um, the spinning spools and now this well COVID just kind of made it difficult okay what do I want to spend my time on quilting and my heart always goes to my Cindy Needham project so I'm kind of um, in an odd spot so I can't wait to see what you guys do remember if you figure out something really clever with your quilting we want to see it 
and my rules are equal amount of quilting over the whole surface. That's my number one rule. Um, I like to have something, I like things that are a little structured, but that's just a personal choice, like a grid versus a loosey-goosey, but that's my own choice. Also, let's go back and look at chantelles. If I do something on the inside that's rigid, like a crosshatch grid, maybe in the flying geese, I might do something like a cable. So I like to mix straight lines with curved lines. So those are the tricks I go to when I go to look at quilting. What am I gonna do? Now, this is not the whole Cindy Needham jam. You understand that. Okay, and then this is Rienda, Renda, and um, I love polka dots. And I wouldn't, I would have thought, I wouldn't have thought to do the way you did it. And guess what? Now I will think to do that. I love how the polka dots are in the background of the baskets and then they bleed into the spacers. I think that's really cool. I like it a lot. See, this is the thing. We all learn from each other, right? Okay, and then this is Lynn's. And this is her own fabric. Let's see. She did a different set. Look at what she did with all those um, square within a squares. It didn't look like you had to do that much fiddling either then to make the whole thing come together. Oh, and as an aside, I love that grunge polka dot fabric. And why I don't own every single piece of it, I don't know. One other thing I want to point out that I'm just seeing right now is that Though that grunge polka dot is primarily the background for everything, she's thrown in some brights, like in the flying geese or the um, in one of the square within the squares, lighter than the grunge, and that gives it a sparkliness that I think if you didn't do Lynn, it would have lost. So congratulations. I don't know if that was something you planned or just something that happened intuitively. Okay, and this is Noella's, and I believe we looked at this last week because I commented on her spacers and how uh, she's using that focus fabric. But what I want to look at now is how she's handling the corners and where she's turning. And my guess is, and my prayer is, Noella, that let's go to the left-hand side border and you kind of change it part of the way down, more of the way down than in the center. And on the right hand side, I hope that you will change it more of the same on the upper right hand side so that they're not directly across from each other. I wish I had a pointer. <laughs> I wish I had a pointer that I could show you, but I don't. Okay, so then this is Caroline's. How fresh is that? Just beautiful. It's so fun to see these come forward. Oh, and the other thing, Caroline, that I thought was interesting was that block of the blue that you got on the left-hand side from the ba baskets. Talk about if this were a whole quilt, the secondary designs you could pull in together. So this is the value of show and tell. Now next is the value of my guest, Philippa Naylor. Philippa, we've done, I believe, one show with her. We were supposed to tape with her um, this round when we were at the lake, Lake Travis, and couldn't get over, planes weren't flying, and all that good stuff. Philippa's work is extraordinary. But what you need to know about Philippa is that before she, and I believe you find this out in the show, and I believe the show was on Trapunto. So you, you, Philippa Naylor, you're going to want to look up. Um, she uh, designed high-end lingerie. So her attention to detail and everything is just astonishing. So I was really happy when we could uh, get together, do a record, and what she's doing now is not that far-fetched, but it is different. So let's take a look. And we've looked at some of her earlier work in this thing and then what she's doing now. If you're a garment maker, I think you're gonna be excited about this. And even if you're not, you're gonna love the whole journey. Let's go, Philippa. Well, Philippa Naylor, how are you today? I'm really well, thank you, Alex. How are you? Quite well. I have to tell everybody <laughs> that we were supposed to tape with you and then everything got shut down again and you were supposed to tape, uh, teach in Houston, right? 
Yes, yeah, and so for the second year running, I haven't been able to come, which is a great shame because I have been every year to teach at Houston till, since 2006. And it was in 2009 that I did that original taping with you in the quilt show at Cynthia England's house. And I was just saying to David and Pizza, who are here in the room, I can remember exactly what I was wearing and I was going to put it on this evening. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this evening, this evening. So where are you right now? So uh, so in Yorkshire, in England, about 200 miles north of London. And yes, it's the evening here, but not for you. No, it's not. And Philippa, I'm, I'm just telling you, I'm so glad you agreed to do this because you've got, I, I want to take a look at a couple of your quilts, but then you're on to kind of a new thing. But really, it's not a new thing. It's a full circle thing in my book. And we'll get to that in a moment, right? Yeah, so what is old is new again. Well, well, okay, I'm not going to wait and get to it in a minute. I'm going to say it now. You used to sew lingerie. Uh, yeah, so I trained as a clothing designer. So when I left school, I trained as a clothing designer and I worked as a lingerie designer before I got into quilting. So I've had a long and varied textile career. Yes, you have. And it's in the details. It is in the details in your work. And you, you, you get those ribbons like there's no tomorrow. Well, let's just take a look at one of your earlier pieces so people can get the gist of it. Tell us about this, please. Um, so that piece was made in 2004, and it was made when I was still living in Saudi Arabia. I lived in Saudi from uh, 1989 to 2004, and it was the last quilt that I made in Saudi. And it's, oh, it's big. It's over 80 inches square. Well, it's not square, it's wavy. Um, and it's called Diamond Dust, and it has tiny little sequins stitched all over it, and it glitters um, in the light. And um, it's all hand dyed fabrics and many many years ago I had it at a quilters guild conference here in the UK and we were in a really big conference hall and the lights were really low in the evening and somebody came up to me and said do you know what Philippa your quilts even look good in the dark <laughs> <laughs> so it's all shiny and stuff your detail yeah, so yeah okay let's take a look at another one okay this is how I think of you Okay, and this one was made in 2007 and um, it must have been the first year that I was teaching at Houston and I was looking for some inspiration for um, the next big quilt and I went into the show in Houston and there was a very traditional big lone star and it was really, really eye-catching really sort of pulled you in and I thought yeah that's exactly what I can do I can take that traditional lone star and curve all the lines and make it into a much more contemporary piece and put a lot of um trapunto and free motion quilting in it so it is based on that traditional lone star again all with hand-dyed fabrics and that one is called star sign and that one did win some quite nice prizes prizes if I remember rightly actually at Houston funnily enough well, and on the show, when you were on, you taught Toronto, correct? I did. I did. Yes. And people still say to me, you know, that they still refer back to that and that they saw me on the quilt show 12 years ago. So um, it was a really fun thing to do. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. You knocked everybody's socks off there. Um, here's a Newark piece of yours. And this is large also, correct? Uh, yes, yeah, not as big as the other ones. And this was made um, when my mother-in-law died at the age of um, 93. And I wanted to do a sort of tree of life thing that um, that sort of just celebrated the end of her life. But I ended up with this kind of shrub bush kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and it... it um, it's yeah it was all to use fabrics that I hadn't bought because it was all about sort of the end of her oh. her life really and so it I don't know if it was dedicated to her but that was the inspiration behind it that's beautiful but now everybody you need to know <laughs> she's gone small right <laughs> I'm gonna give oh, you yeah, saw that one. I'm gonna give you full screen Sorry. okay go 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 ahead I'm giving you full screen 
Okay, so um, after making many large quilts, I decided that I needed a new challenge. And I'm always trying to do different things in different styles, different techniques. Um, and so I did a couple of very small whole cloth quilts, which I have actually got in the room, but they're so pale that you can't see them um, on camera. And this is one that I made in 2017. Um, and this is turned edge applique. So this has got lots of little applique shapes. And I manufactured um, tiny little plastic templates using um, a paper punch and, and various things. And I gathered the um, fabric around those to make the applique shapes. And then I, I stitched them on. And it's got a little handmade um, rouleau edge on it. So this little pink, I don't know if you can see, it's really tiny, tiny little um, pink loopy edging. Um, and this little thing did tremendously well for me. Um, and it went off and it won Best of Show at the Festival of Quilts in um, the UK. And it won um, a, a prize at Houston. And it won, I think I was incredibly lucky. I think I won three consecutive um, best miniature quilts at um, Paducah as, as well. A, and I saw it. In, yeah, I saw it in Paducah. Hey, can you try and hold it up closer to the camera? Sure, of course. Even more, even more, even more. Yeah, the, there you go. Long arms. Oh, man. I mean, I was just shocked when I saw that and then find your name next to it because that's not how I think of you. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Um, so I just have a little one here, um, which was a, a class sample. Um, we we set up in 2019, Quilters Question Time, David, my business partner, and I um, filming classes and releasing them edited, so not Zoom classes. So we were kind of pre-pandemic and really lucky with our timing. But one of our classes, people kept asking for miniatures. And so there are many versions of this particular one out there Love that it. the students have made. Love it. Okay, last but not least. And then this is the uh -huh. most recent miniature. Um, this one is called circuit training, which is an exercise class. And I used to be an exercise instructor and it's based on circles, obviously. And it has um, some intricate piecing, some applique. Um, it has a little bit of paper piecing. It has prairie points around the edge. It has lots of free motion. Um, and this was another one of the... Um, uh, best of uh, sorry, best miniature quilts, and I thoroughly enjoyed um, making the miniatures because it was everything that I'd learned in the big pieces that enabled me to take all those techniques and put them into the small work. And and again, always a progression and trying to do something new. So I may not have finished with miniatures yet. I haven't decided. Well, let's take a <laughs> let's take a close up on that. Look at that, everybody. That is just amazing. Just amazing. Oh, Philippa. <laughs> oh, Philippa. You're very flattering. <laughs> what are we to do with you? Oh, my goodness. Okay. So I am trying to get left screen on you. Let me add me there. Oh, now I'm the left and you're the right. We can handle that. Okay. But now you're on to um, something completely different, but going back to your uh, uh, clothing roots. So tell us about that because that's pretty darn exciting. It is exciting and we're working really hard um, for a very soon to release the first of our new series. So we did two years of Quilters Question Time and we filmed 25 classes, all kinds of different quilting techniques and projects. And um, the students kept saying, well, we want you to carry on. We want you to carry on. And, but I felt that I'd kind of done as much as I wanted to do on that for the time being. And so I was really keen to get back into clothing. And so we are now um, about to to release garment makers question time and so I want to teach people how to make wonderful garments that are individual that are really well made that don't look homemade that they're actually going to wear and so the whole purpose of the class is to show you that it's really doable and you can make things that you want to wear and um, each class has a particular project so the first class is a shift dress and then we move on to a skirt and then we move on to a blouse but the techniques can be taken and used in lots of different garments um, and so it isn't just about making that project it is going to build through a whole range of different things and, and okay so oh, I, really? pop, I pop this up too soon so it's going to be like in pattern form just like when you used to go get a simplicity pattern type deal 
Uh, so absolutely. So there's always a kind of, you know, you start in this from new, so you can, in a sense, do anything that you want with it, but you want it to be very doable for people. So I didn't want to go and say, right, I am using buttrick pattern X, Y, Z, we're all going to make this. Mm -hmm. I've just said, I'm going to make a shift dress, but you can take this technique and use it on all kinds of dresses. You can use a vintage pattern, you could use this one, you could use this, you could use this and this. You're going to learn these techniques and then adapt them to your pattern. So I want to show you best practice, best techniques, and then you go away and you do what works for you. Because we don't want one pattern that is no longer available because everybody's bought it. We want to give options um, and make it really as accessible as we can. And I'm thinking that this is exceedingly timely because a lot of the makers now are doing their own clothing. I mean, it, well, yeah. So let's take a look at the next image. Look at the detail, people. Well, it's piping. I do love a bit of piping, don't I? In fact, um, I was just, um, as we were sat waiting, this blouse isn't quite finished, but it's a Liberty Lawn. And as we were waiting, I was just hand sewing the inside of one of the cuffs and I've just got the buttonholes to do. Um, yeah, so um, I, I think that one of the things that I, perhaps the thing that I enjoy the most is just the quality of the workmanship and getting everything really precisely done um, and feeling really um, pleased with the results. And that's what I want to pass on to people. I mean, you know, you, you can all sew a zip in perhaps, but let me show you throughout the classes, four or five different ways of showing zips in. So you've got different ways for different applications and they are going to be the best sewn in zips that you could possibly do. It's that kind of idea. It's taking it... Um, to the next level but for everybody as you say you know young people i think there's a there's a bit of a difference between the garment making and the quilt making is that more young people um want to make clothes and that people perhaps come to the quilt making perhaps a little bit later on in their um sewing career that's not to say there aren't young quilters there are but i think there are more young people wanting to make garments so i'm hoping that it will encompass all ages oh yeah oh yeah let's take a look at the next day oh that's that one sorry let's take a look at this one Okay, what, what is going on oh. here? Look at the detail, people. So um, this is, um, uh, the second class is an A-line skirt. And so that seems very simple, doesn't it? That I can show you how to make an A-line skirt. But if you've been sewing for some time, yes, you're going to pick up some um, good techniques. But what can we do differently? So with all the classes, there isn't just the project. There's, right, this is what we're making. But then look what I did with this. And so what you're seeing there is um, is a very wavy hem um, on a very thick boiled wool skirt, which you may not want in certain places in the States, but certainly in Yorkshire works. Um, and so it's got a wavy hem. It's got some upholstery cord um, in the hem. And then it's got a thick um, wide binding on the bottom. Um, and again, it's just got the button and a little bit of finishing off to do. Um, but um, yeah, that's another another little kind of, oh, where can we go with this? How can we make it different? Okay, got another image. Look at that. Is that um, like the sleeves you have on right now? Um, it's, it's, it's not dissimilar. Um, so this is from the shift dress, which is the first class. And in the class, we make a, a shift dress, which is, has a one piece front and back and an invisible zipper in the back and a short sleeve. But then I took that very pattern and you can see the dress behind me and I've added a big deep frill onto the hem. So it makes it in from a knee length into a maxi skirt, makes it much more fashionable. I put a tie around the waist and then I show how I took the sleeve, the very simple sleeve, pattern and I slashed it from the hem up into the um, sleeve head and I opened it out so that I made all this extra fullness and then the um, the sleeve is actually a double sleeve and inside it I have completely lined it out with silk organza and silk organza is very fine but very stiff so I don't need to put any shoulder pad or any additional support in that sleeve head it is purely the silk organza that holds that position and it's just absolutely it's a delight to wear actually I wore it through the filming of all that first class and it was really fun to wear. So, okay, so how do people take advantage of your offerings? By the way, we just love you, Philippa. I'm telling you, you are just, <laughs> you are a light. You are a light shining in on the earth. So how do we, how do we hang with you? How does this work? 
Okay, so um, the website is um, GMQT, which stands for Garment Makers Question Time dot co dot UK. And if you go onto that website, we're not released yet. We've just got a few more weeks before we actually release. First of November is our release date. But you can click on that to express your interest and you go onto our information waiting list. And then on the 1st of November, you'll be able to access the first class and it will be a new class every month. Okay, so if somebody goes directly to your website, is there a link there that's provided that you can go through? Okay, so, um, well, you can, <laughs> this gets really complex. You can go to our Quilters Question Time website, which is quiltersquestiontime.com, and there's a link on that one that will okay. take you through. But if you just, if you just do gmqt.co.uk, you will find those. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I got to tell everybody whenever, like in Paducah, we stay in the same hotel and, and we always kind of just bump into each other in the lobby and, and you're just, you're just great, Philippa. I don't, I'm going to get weird and gushy on you. So I need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> My husband's in the room, and and he's a good job that he's not coming in to tell you the real story. <laughs> yeah, he wishes he was married to the woman that you see on film. <laughs> <laughs> tell him to say the same thing. <laughs> so, well, congratulations, and hopefully you'll be able to get stateside soon. I, were your classes all full? I bet they were. I, you know, I didn't even look, so I don't know. I really don't know, but um, you know. We'll, we'll get back to yeah. life as we knew it, but in a little bit of a different way, won't we? We all need to just reflect on what's happened in the last couple of years and learn some lessons from that and come back better and perhaps slightly different. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, great pleasure. Always lovely to talk to you. And, and hello to everybody out there. Really nice to chat with you. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Isn't she great? I just love her. I just love her. And if you take a class from her, you can figure out how she gets that great red lipstick on. Just saying. <laughs> so uh, Wednesday, I have another wonderful interview. I've got a pile of these. I mean, it's kind of like we were so bummed we couldn't go get them at Houston. But now guess what? I know a lot of you didn't go to Houston, so it's your feast and your benefit. We've got, I'm going to, Tomasita, I'm going to slaughter your last night name. Tomasita Luvia Lagones had a special exhibit at Houston and it was on the suffragettes. And it was really interesting. And I think now of, um, you know, women and voting and all that, that just didn't come with just a, whew, take it. So there was a whole exhibit about that of which she and her friend curated it. So uh, that is on Wednesday. Now, what am I going to do for the rest of the day? I don't know. That's the beauty of this whole thing. But I did bring this up and I think I will continue to work on it. And this leads to what we'll be doing next. Um, I'm going to get out my embroidery and work with my silk and just do free form stuff. I think we're calling the next class, Make It Your Own. See, that one's in progress. And we do have a neutrals kit that uh, Kristen and Suzanne and I put together, as well as a pastel kit and a brights kit. And uh, they're not in the store yet. I believe the silk is arriving tomorrow. And so they're gonna be cutting like mad. And um, we will put together basically a turnkey program for you so that you don't have to go, I need this, I need that, I need that. And believe it or not, the stitches you're looking at here are really very simple. And it's going to be abstract. It's going to be do your own thing. I can't wait to see what you're going to do. I love how you so generously share. So again, um, I don't think I have to go to the store today, but I've got news for the world. I'm not going tomorrow. And uh, go check out Philippa. She is just... Also, again, Google her show, Philippa Naylor at the quilt, Google, go search at thequiltshow.com. And I tell you, it was really interesting. She lived in Saudi Arabia for a while too. I, she is just not what you see is what you get. There's a whole depth there that's amazing. And I'm ever so grateful that uh, she's in our lives, mine, yours, all of us, because she is a bright star. So... 
Um, when will the kits be available? Melanie, I don't know, but I'm, I'm going to say within a couple weeks. If they can get that stuff and start cutting, I will tell you the threads are in, and uh, Wonderfill made put these boxes together. Ah! And then we, so you can get wonderful thread. You can get, we'll tell you the needles you're going to want. And I think that's all going to be in the kit too. This is Kristen's deal. We're throwing in some metallics to the side if you want to get that. So I'm going to say in a couple weeks and um, we won't be starting the class. I was going to be the Monday after Thanksgiving, but we had to bump it one more because that's the start of the block of the month. I mean, there's just, it, it's just a management thing. But it's okay. This is not a project you're going to finish in two seconds. It's going to be your quiet place where you're going to go and stitch. And I will stitch with you and we will move on together. So, Melanie, I'm sorry I can't be more. Um, I know John's got that information and all that, but everything's cut. Okay. With the shipping issues, and not from our end, but with the ports and all that, we just... We're doing the best we can to get you what we can. So anyways, I do know the BOM's about ready to go. Yeah! And we will do a reveal on that on the December 1st. That's when we're going to do the reveal. I think you'll be very, very pleased. So have a good one. I'm going to go stitch, um, hang with my buddies, and um, see you later. Wednesday to be exact.